we have been talking about over and over it is, it doesn't matter what others say or what we say, it matters who, what Jesus says about us, amen? He's the one who counts. He's the one who declares over us who we are. And so constantly we want to remind ourselves, what does he say about me? Amen? What's he declare about me? And we've been talking about his love and, and those things, and in a couple of weeks we'll get back to that. Um, but this morning um, we've got, I think, a very special honor and privilege. Um, many of you know, or maybe you don't, that um, for the last almost three years, going on three years, um, I've been traveling to Kokomo a night or two a week. Um, to spend time over there training and, and teaching and, and doing things. Um, and there's a couple that I have partnered with, and it's Deb and C Curtis um, Copeland, who are sitting here on the front row. Um, and in this past January, together we partnered together with the Lord to start a training school. And so we have a group of flexible people you know it's hard to you know know how many but you know as many as 35 people have been a part of that so far this year um every tuesday night and and they're getting ready to spawn off some additional groups out of that leadership and we're training up people to so that they may walk more in who god has created them to be to help them be prepared for that which god has always created them for and and this whole group over here um, represents that um that group today obviously we're there and all here but i i've invited i think it's important for you guys to hear from them because you know th there is a divine appointment between us and this group and what god's doing in kokomo and listen you're connected to that. You say, well, gosh, we don't know about that. Well, you're going to know about them this morning and hear from them and, and hear some of their heart. But I, I just want you to understand that God is moving other places. We talk about all the time. It's not just about us. Amen. We ought to get excited about what God's doing in other places. And, and I just happen to have the privilege of being a part of that. You guys get to be a privilege, have the privilege of being a part of other things. But this morning, I've just invited a, a Curtis and Deb to come and share. And they, um, they've got a plan for some others to share some things as well. And so um, let's just welcome them, um, Curtis and Deb, um, here at Prairie Grove, and just see what the Lord has for us today. Thank you, Brian. Well, as it says up there, that's who we are, Curtis and Deb Copeland. Um, that's, that's pretty easy, but who are we? Um, how many has ever been to a family reunion? Yeah, okay, this is a family reunion, and we're part of your family. You just haven't met us yet. We're like extended family. We're just in Kokomo. You know, and something that I've noticed in when we got here today, this is a beautiful facility, by the way. Um, there's, there's, there's joy in here. There's joy in this place. And that joy isn't in the carpet. It's not in the drywall. It's not in the beautiful windows. It's in, it's in you. There's joy in here. And, the, and something that really stood out with me um, in hearing the testimonies and hearing, hearing even the prayer request there's a, there's a heart that is thankful in everything that I've heard today, a thankful heart. And, you know, God sees that. He knows our heart. He knows what we have need of in everything that we do and say. Even when you don't ask, he still knows. And having a joyful heart for God is the most pleasing thing that, he, that we could do for him. You know, uh, one of the songs that we were singing says, we're here for you to serve you, but also know that he's here to serve you. Jesus wants to serve you and help you in our daily walk. So uh, this is Deb, my wife, and um, we've been married a long time, right? Long time? 42. 42. <laughs> Thank you. 42 years. So... Um, you know, who are we? We're, we're just, we're, we're like you. We're just, we work. Um, and our goal, our, our goal in life is to do what God has called us to do, whatever that is. And whatever, and we, and we didn't know three years ago that it was going to include Brian. And this has been a fantastic journey for us to have Brian 
come and give of himself in what God has, you, you may or you may not know what a, what, what a wonderful thing you have in Brian. I'm telling you, he, God is using him in such a, a unique and powerful way that it's life-changing. We're seeing lives changed. I mean, we're seeing miracles happen, and I'm not exaggerating. I'm not making it up. It's not just church talk. This is, this is real talk. We're seeing people's lives being transformed, and how is that happening? They're, they're just believing the things that he is teaching, and we're training and equipping. You know, we're all called to train and equip and to help each other in this journey of life with God in our life. That's our calling. That's your calling, and he's, he has an expectation on each and every one of you to do something, not that you have to earn something, but he, you know, the, the fruit of being a believer and a child of God is the fruit. And we want to bear good fruit. And that's really what we're about, bearing good fruit. So we're, it's an honor to be here. We're, we're so thankful to be here. And um, to know Brian and, and Brenda, I mean, it, it's, it's an incredible journey. We don't have a plan. We didn't have a plan. We didn't start with a plan. We said, hey, can you come over and do a class? And we can't get rid of him. I mean, <laughs> it just goes over. It's going on and on. And so, you know, we're on God's timetable, really. And whatever that is, is what it is. And it's all good. Anything God does in your life for you, it's going to be good. It's expect good. He, there's nothing wrong with having an expectation. He wants you to expect good things from him because all good things come from our Heavenly Father. Amen? So I'm going to turn this over to Deb because she's got a lot to say. Um, she brought every version of every Bible and, well, only two of the, of the ten. I'm sorry. Okay, but uh, she has a lot of good things to say. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless the rest of you by letting her say some stuff. And I'm going to go sit down. Thanks. You good? If you want to add something, come on up. I will. So, good morning, and first of all, I just want to honor Brian and say thank you for the invitation. I've got a lot to say, because you know what? He's got a lot to say, and he's just looking for open vessels to say it through. So, um, let me tell you a little bit more about ourselves. We've been married 42 years. We have four children. Our la we have three biological, and our last one was adopted from Ukraine. We have seven grandchildren. We have two golden doodles, 23 chickens and 45 employees. That about sums up our life right there. <laughs> um, we own two businesses. We, um, together, I manage the coffee shop and we have a restoration company and Curtis runs that. So, and before we go any farther, I wanna honor my mom and dad also that made the journey over from Kokomo. Thanks for coming. <laughs> They're part of the group and the rest of our posse here is, we travel together. We are out to see a territory changed in Kokomo and he is doing it. So real quick before I get started, I'm gonna tell the story how we met Brian. Because it was, it was just such a God story. God brings people into our lives in just such an amazing way. And my prayer is always, Lord, give me eyes to see who you're bringing along my path. Because do we have something or do we not have something? So um, has it been three years or two years? Three years? It's been three years ago. Um, in December of 2021, we... Um, had some drama in our family like some of us do and I stayed home that day and was just really asking the Lord what is going on in our family like what has happened and he said I want you to go back to your prayer room and I'm going to teach you about the spirit of adoption and so I spent four hours with the Holy Spirit and he taught me and changed my life in an instant in that and taught me about the orphan spirit and I was just so excited and then um one of our friends that's a pastor asked us to come share it at his church probably the next week. And then about a month later, the same pastor was at the coffee shop and told my dad and I, he's like, hey, I got this teacher coming over and he's gonna teach a class, I think, on the kingdom. And um, you guys ought to come. And for some reason, you know, I just, you know how we are. We're just cautious because we're like, all right, well, let's, let's check him out first. But I didn't check out Brian, which is really strange because I normally do, normally he does too. So dad and I went to a couple of them, and um, 
I came back and told Curtis, like, we got to have this guy to the coffee shop. Like, let's have him and do a class. And um, so I think the next class, Brian said, well, I'm going to teach on, you didn't say beloved identity, I think just identity. And I'm like, what? So I said, I, then I had to stalk him on Facebook. I'm like, I got to see what this guy's about because I just had that revelation like a month ago. And um, so I put him up on Facebook and we have 87 friends alike. And I don't know this man. And some of my best friends are like writing on his Facebook page. And I was like, Lord, what on earth is that about? And so, you know, and so went the story. So we had him to the coffee shop and he taught on the kingdom. And I do believe the class invited him back for the next class. And the class invited him back again for the next class. And then Brian invited himself back for the next class. <laughs> and I think maybe we invited him once or twice. <laughs> I don't know. So here we are three years later and seeing lives transform through the power of the blood. And that's what um, I want to share a little bit with you. I don't have anything real deep tonight cause, or today because this man has a lot of deep. We, li we all listen to his sermons every week, so we know what he's teaching you guys. <laughs> but I want to talk to you guys today about experience versus doctrine. I listened to a sermon last week that was talking about this, and honestly, I never thought about it this way. And um, in the Passion Translation, if some of you have that, it says, um, it talks about the 40 days. I love the 40 days after the resurrection. To me, that is just such a wonderful gift that the Lord gave um, those disciples. 40 more days, those last 40 days, and to me, the last words of a person are always so important in those 40 days. So after um, Jesus had appeared to them in Acts 1-3, it said, During these encounters, he taught them the truths of the kingdom. You know, it didn't say after they memorized the whole Bible, which they did have to memorize the Torah. You know, if you've taken the discipleship class, you know about that. <laughs> but um, it was after their encounters... You know, in an encounter, there has to be two people, two people. There has to be somebody speaking and somebody listening. And in this encounter in Acts, it was Jesus speaking and it was the disciples listening. But I want to challenge you today. When was your last encounter with Jesus? What did he say to you? And what did you say back to him? You know, in John 10, 27, it says, My sheep know my voice. You know, we, we ought to be hearing from the Holy Spirit every day. He's got something to say. It talks in Psalms about his thoughts are innumerable towards you every day. He's always thinking of you and always wants to say something to you. It's kind of a little, you know, we kind of laugh a little bit because I'm always asking everybody, what did God say to you today? I'm so interested in the revelation that you have from the Lord. So I'm going to share some of my revelation tonight, just a little journey of some revelation. And I have my journal, and everybody that runs with me knows I journal. Because when the Lord speaks to you, he's got a lot to say, and I can't remember it all. And sometimes that's a lot, and it's very important. So I'm going to encourage you today, if you don't journal, to get a journal. And just sit down in your prayer time and say, Holy Spirit, what do you have to say to me today? And I promise you, he's got a lot to say. He's got more to say than I do. And he's going to say some good stuff to you. And it's going to be fresh manna every day. Every day. So um, I'm going to go through three encounters that I had with the Holy Spirit that have changed my DNA. I used to be this way. You guys have talked about metanoia. You know, I've had some repentance. I used to think this way, and now I think this way. In the fall of, oh, hope, I forgot you. I'm gonna have you pray at the end. In the fall of 2021, I had, um, I'm just gonna be very transparent. I already told this to a group last week, but I'm gonna be very transparent with you. I had a um, crazy encounter with Holy Spirit while I was making coffee one day. You know, it's always funny how you just have those suddenly moments. You know, you're not expecting it, and then Holy Spirit says something to you and catches you off guard. Um, I was, during uh, COVID, we had an employee that um, didn't understand the culture I was trying to establish in my business. <laughs> and um, 
you know, there was, there was some lying and there was some stealing and I was like, oh, just backbiting and I was just so frustrated at this employee and I'm like, Lord, how, how are we supposed to witness? How are we supposed to let the light shine in a situation like this? And um, one day I was at this, down at the espresso machine making a coffee for somebody and this person came and stood beside me and it had bothered my heart so bad I didn't want to hear their voice. Like, just, you know, you just let things get to you and you know it's wrong. And you're like, I can't fix this, only you can fix this, God. And so I'm standing there making coffee and this person come and stood beside me and said something and it was just like, Ugh, fingernails on a chalkboard. Ugh, probably with some cuss words involved in it. And I'm like, Ugh, what's that about? And the Holy Spirit screamed in my spirit and said, how on earth do you expect to love the harvest when you can't love the one standing next to you. And I knew he was right. And there was no backing up or but, 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 and if, 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 there was nothing. I knew he was right. So that day when I went home, I'm like, Lord, only you can change a heart. I cannot change a heart. I know my heart's wrong in this. I don't know what to do about it. You're gonna have to change it. So that's why I brought this book. So he said, somebody had gave me this journal, I don't even know where it came from, and, um, but somebody gave it to me. And he said, I want you to get that book out, and I want you to start going through the Bible and writing down the love scriptures. So I just Googled love scriptures and just started writing them down in here. And I'm like, okay, what are we going to do now? And he said, I want you to carry this book with you wherever you go. And when one of those thoughts that doesn't line up with what I have to say about that person comes up, I want you to get that and read it. So I carried this with me 24 hours a day for, I don't know, maybe four months. Enough that when I went to some of the pastor's meetings, they're like, Deb, what's that book about you always got? My employees would be like, what's that book you got, Deb? What are you doing? And so I just shared with them. I don't love like God loves, and I want to love everyone like God loves. And I took those four months, and I, all that I could say is I just crammed those in my spirit because that's who I want to be. I want to be like who God has called me to be. You see, Curtis and I have um, had the privilege of operating and um, ministering overseas. So we, um, we ministered in Ukraine for probably 10 or 12 years in prisons, in orphanages, partnered with a lot of churches, Still to date, we have the record for the largest amount of humanitarian aid by any individual going into the Ukraine. And that was Fruit Loops and Amway. And we saw a lot of people, thousands of people come to the Lord over that. But after that, the Lord said, after we saw thousands of people come to the Lord, he said, how are you gonna love the harvest if you don't love the one standing next to you? Man, that was hard. So after about four months of taking this book with me everywhere I went, one day I was down at the espresso machine, this lax, the exact same place, and this person came up next to me and said something, and I'm going to tell you it was like the light switch switched. I loved that person. It was a total, I just can't even tell you. This was the encounter. You know, Paul had an encounter on the road to Damascus. You know, Jesus didn't come down and say, this scripture and this scripture and pray this prayer and you're going to be saved and do this. He had an encounter with Jesus, a face-to-face -face with that light that transformed that man's life. And that's what happened to me that day at the espresso machine. And the crazy thing was the next day that um, person turned their notice in. And when she left, my heart was right. And we loved on her and blessed her. And that's what God's wanting to do. But little did I know you know, it says the Holy Spirit is here to tell us of things to come. Little did I know that was the beginning of my revelation of beloved identity. And I know you guys have talked about that a lot. Because um, through all that, if we don't love ourselves, how on earth are we going to love that one next to us? You know, and he takes us on that journey of transformation and that metanora, changing our thoughts process about ourselves and that's where the love flows out to others around us so that was my first revelation of love my second one 
was, um, I don't remember if this was late 2022 or 2023. One morning, the Lord had me get up, and um, he said, I want you to read Matthew 20, 27, and John 13. And I'm like, okay, I know both those scriptures, so I'm going to remind you what they are there. 20, 27, Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give my life for a ransom for many. And John 13 was the Last Supper, and that's when Jesus watched, washed Peter's feet. And so the Lord had me read it. And I said, okay, I know this story. You know, like all the rest of us, I know this story. This is a good story. And he said, I want you to read that last line. And I want you to hear the depth in it. And the last line, you know, he, we all know the story. He tried to wash Peter's feet. Peter said, no, you're not going to wash my feet. And this is how adamant the Lord is about serving us. He said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you have no part in me. No part. And I said, wow, Holy Spirit, that's like, that's pretty, that's pretty cut and dry. There's no like ifs or maybe or whatever in that. So um, he said, I want you to go back and read Matthew, Matthew 20, 27. And it says, I did not come, Jesus said, I did not come to serve, but to be served. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, Deb, how can we serve you today? And that was a very humbling question from the creator of the universe. And, you know, if you've ever had an encounter like that, talking about a metanoia, my brain just kind of went on kilt a little bit because I'm thinking, how do I want him to bless me? If he asks you that, you know, you're like, how do I want him to bless me? And automatically, unfortunately, you know, our brains go right to the physical. Well, I got a house, I got a car you know, I got this, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, that's so carnal, what? <laughs> Let me just get out of that, and I just kept hearing the Holy Spirit said, how can we serve you today, and I said, God, I don't know, I don't, you know me, you created me, I don't even know what to ask for here, you're obviously asking me this question for a reason, and so for probably the next month, every morning, I heard the Holy Spirit said, Deb, how are we going to serve you today, and, you know, that's what the Holy Spirit's asking you today, too. He wants to serve you today. He said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. You know, when we serve, it is out of his love for us, not to gain something from him. Because when he asked me that, how can I serve you today? That took 100% out of any ounce of works that I ever did right out of that. Because there's nothing I can do. He said, I want you to sit down so I can serve you. And that's what he's saying to the body of Christ today. I want you to sit down so I can serve you with some good things. So this went on for probably a month, and every day on the way to work, and I'd tell him I get to work, and I'm like, Holy Spirit, just saying, how can we serve you today? And I would say the same thing. I don't know, what do you want to serve me with? And um, so this went on, so in the middle, um, of that, I was invited to speak. We, I go to several par, uh, pastor's prayer groups in town. There's two of them. And they had invited me to speak. And for the last 10 years, they knew whenever they invited me to speak, I was going to go to Joshua, where it said the two and, the, um, the two and a half tribes, when they, um, you guys, are you guys familiar with the story of Joshua? So the two and a half, there was the tribes that were getting ready to go over the Jordan. And um, God told the two and a half tribes to stay on this side. But then when you, I tell you to go over and you fight with your brothers and you win, you all have rest. And so that was always for 10 years when I went to a meeting, I would say, yeah, we got to get together so we can have some rest. We're never going to have any rest in this city till we get together. So one morning when God's asking me what he wants me to, what, what can I serve you with? He, I was getting ready to speak, and he said, go read that again. And so I'm going to turn here just to um, Joshua. Just read this real quick for you. He said, I want you to read this again. And I said, all right, I feel like, like this page is about ready to fall out of my Bible because I read this so much. And it says, and to the Reubenites and the Gadonites and half the tribe of the Manasseh, Joshua spoke, saying, remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, this is what the Lord said. The Lord your God is giving you rest, and then he's given you the land. So 
So when the Lord told me that, he showed me the busyness and the chaos in the bride of Christ, but not only that in my life. And that's what he was giving me. He was showing me the revelation of rest. And I said, Lord, what, you know, what, show me about this so I can share it. And he said, when you go to your Christian brother or sister and you greet them and you meet them in the store and you say, how are you? What is our response? I'm so busy. I'm so busy. We got stuff going on. I need a vacation. I need this. And I'm the number one person that was saying that. I know because I said it probably more than everybody else. And the Lord said, you're not at rest. We say these things because our soul's not at rest. We're looking for physical rest because our soul's not at rest. And so I, um, of course, like I am, Brooke knows, Brooke works with me. I just go into work and I got this revelation and I'm telling everybody like, hey, God wants to give us some rest. Like he wants to give our soul some rest. And um, he said, Deb, that's what you have need of. And he's telling each and every one of us, he wants to serve you with something today, whether it's rest, whether it's peace, whether it's healing, he has something for you today. So I want you to just, I'm just going to take a minute because I feel like Jesus is wanting to have some encounters. And, you know, your pastor's been talking about face-to-face -face and face-to-face -face encounters. And just knowing that we are made in his image and he's got something special. And we don't know, just like meeting Brian that day, we had no idea three years later, we would all be sitting here transformed more into his image. And you guys had the privilege of having him every week too. We love that. Um, so I'm just going to give you guys just a minute. And I just want to have just some quiet time. And I know this is awkward, but I'm always the awkward one. My husband can tell you that. <laughs> but just ask the Lord. Like, have him bring back to your memory the last time you had an encounter or, you know, if we can't, sometimes it's a year or two in between if we can't remember, like, when does he have an encounter for you? And what is that going to be? So I'm just going to just give you a minute. Just close your eyes and just still yourself before him and ask him. You, Father. And I would just encourage you, if he showed you something today when you go home, if you don't have a journal, get it out. If you do have one, to get it out and just write down what he was showing you, whether he just said, I love you, or he showed you a picture, or whatever, um, whatever he's got for you. So I just, you know, I just wanted to share that journey, my journey with you. You know, it's always precept on precept on precept. You know, he builds, he builds, and, um, Sometimes we just get in the Word so deep we forget about our experiences and our encounters. And um, I just want to encourage you, and I feel like the Holy Spirit's encouraging you. He wants to have an encounter with you today with that. So before we leave, I want my friend Hope. Huh? That was service, love, and rest. I'm going to have my friend Hope. We're going to share something here. You want to, can, you, can you come up? You want me? I'll come back here. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> this, this is my uh, friend, Hope. And we have known each other for probably 10 years. We met in the prayer barn. So we got this great idea in Kokomo, a bunch of pastors and leaders, that we were going to pray until the power fell. We didn't know the power's already in us. <laughs> well, you know, we gained some revelation in the time. So we spent a couple months in a prayer barn.
in a barn out behind a church praying to God, and that's where I met Hope. And Hope um, was so gracious to teach us about prayer and um, the things that the Lord has showed her in that. And I just wanted her really to pray over you all because we are brothers and sisters. It's not about Prairie Grove and it's not about Kokomo. We're in this kingdom Amen. with good gifts together. And that's why, like Curtis said, I love it that we get to come together today. Mm -hmm. uh, can you imagine in heaven what they're saying today? I mean, could you just like think about it, think like what's the angels saying? Wow, and, like some more of the sons and daughters are fellowshipping again today. So I just want you to just go ahead and pray, and you can even just pray some if you want to. Okay. Can you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, we thank you, Father, today, once again, for entering into your presence by the blood of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that we have had praise, thanksgiving, and worship, praising and thanking you, Father, for who and what you are to us. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything below the earth, but Father, you're in all. You're above all and you're through all today, Jesus, and we just bless and praise your holy name. It's in you, Jesus, that we all live and we move and we have our being. Jesus, you are our everything. Jesus, you are our all and all today. And, oh, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word, Jesus Christ, that you sent down from heaven to redeem us from our sinful lives. And Father, we thank you for Curtis and Deb. We thank you for Brian. Lord, we thank you for every soul that's in this sanctuary today. Father, we thank and praise you for all we have heard. We thank and praise you for open ears and open hearts, Lord, that the word of God will fall on our hearts into the good ground of our hearts. Bearing 30, 60, 100 fold, bearing the fruit of the precious Holy Spirit. We thank you today, Lord. And Father, we thank and praise you as you bless this place. Father, have your way here as your kingdom come here and your will is done in and on earth as it is in heaven. And Father, we thank and we praise you, Lord. Glory to God today that you are a healer for every sick sickness on that prayer list. For Jesus, you was wounded for our transgression. Lord, you were bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon you, Jesus. By your stripes, Lord, we are healed. So, Lord, we just receive healing as we intercede for every name on that sick list today. Glory to God today. And, Father, we thank you for using Deb boldly, Father, strong in you and in the power of your might, Jesus. And we thank you, Father, as you continue to bless Brian. To Lord, go preaching the gospel, thanking you, hallelujah, that the gospel is exhibited, demonstrated, and manifested in all that he say and do with signs and wonders following. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. Thank you, Hope. We love you. Kirsch, got anything else? All right. Hey, it was such a privilege to be with you guys today. You know, over three years, we've heard about each other. I feel like there's, like Curtis said, there's a, there's a family reunion here today. So thank you for having us today. Amen. Amen. That's all right. You can go ahead and clap. It's good. You know, I, I just want to encourage us. I, you know, I, I used to tell people that I was a triple A, um, get it done kind of guy. That worked well in the corporate world, by the way. And then I got into the ministry and brought that triple A personality with me. And I, I've kicked in more doors trying to make a way for God than, than anybody else. Lord, I know what you want. Lord, I know what you want. Let's kick it in. Let's do it. And after all these years, he's finally taught me, you just got to wait. Wait on the Holy Spirit. And I think that's probably the thing. Uh, you know, it was June of 2016, the Lord said, I want you to open a training center. I kicked in about 
five or six doors after that trying to start a training center. And then one day the Lord just took me to Kokomo. He said, here's an open door, just go. And I just went and they invited me, to, you know, Devin Curtis invited me to come. And I had no idea who was going to show up. I didn't even really know them. I'm just, hey, I'm going to come. And I, I went. And the things that God is doing are astronomically beyond what I could even imagine when we waited for him. Four years ago, the Lord said, I want you to go to Prairie Grove, out in the middle of nowhere. And, and, and at that time, a, a small congregation of 15 or 20 on a good day. And I want you to go out there. And I don't know if I've ever really said this, to take everything that I've been teaching you and release it into them. Which is the same thing we're doing, in, you know, he's doing in Kokomo, only it's a little different scenario here. And to watch what God's doing. It made absolutely no sense to come to Prairie Grove in the natural. But that's what the Lord said to do. He said, this is the door I'm giving you. And it's incredible what he's doing. And I just want to encourage you this morning. As you have encounters, as the Lord stirs you, as Holy Spirit is speaking to you, let him lead you and then step in. You say, well, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what we're going to do either. We have no idea in Kokomo what's going to happen next week or next month or next year. And I'll be honest, at Prairie Grove, we have no idea what's going to happen next month or next year. And I know that's hard for some of us, right? Come on. We've got to have a plan. Well, he has a plan. We may not have the plan. And it's hard sometimes just to sit and let him reveal what he wants to do. But when we do in our personal lives, I, I tell you what, a, another testimony. Brenda and I are so excited to be living a mile and three quarters straight east of here, across the prairie. We have been looking for a house for almost two and a half years. And I almost kicked the door in once. And we, we went, nope, the Lord's not in that. And he's given us the absolute perfect place. Never thought we'd ever be back in, the, in Gaston, Indiana, but that's where he's planted us. We just have to let him open the doors. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. When I first visited Norma Lou Satter at her house, and Norma had been a part of this congregation, I sat in that house and I thought, man, this is a cool place. This would be neat to live here. This would just be perfect. And almost four years later, the opportunity came for that to, to be a reality. Man, we just got to learn to wait. And I'm not there yet. I tell you what, sometimes Deb and Curtis have to help me, you know, and you guys have to help me say, now, come on, don't, be, don't kick that door in anymore. Don't, don't push that. It's just set back because the temptation is to simply say, I got to move it forward. I got to move the needle. You know, I got to work for the kingdom. I got to do something for Jesus. No, he simply wants me to walk with him. And, and step into those things that he gives us. Amen? Amen. And I am so thrilled that these guys could come today because I've been wanting you guys to, to meet them because, yeah, we are one body. Amen? There's only one kingdom. And God's moving in lots of different places. And, you know, we, just, we love that wherever we go. So, all right, well, let's all stand and we'll just we'll dismiss. And we'll... Now, remember, there's plenty of sign-up sheets out there if you haven't got your name down yet. So, well, Lord, we just thank you for today. And, Lord, we thank you for um, this group of believers from Kokomo who have been so hungry for you. And, Lord, Lord, you're encountering them all the time. Thank you for everyone who's a part of Prairie, calls Prairie Grove their local family. And, Lord, thank you that we are family all together. We are in your family. And so, Lord, we just praise you and we thank you for that. Lord, we just ask that as we go forth from here, Lord, today, tonight, tomorrow, in the morning, whenever, Lord, we just want to have fresh encounters with you. To experience you. To walk with you. And, Lord, we'll give you praise. And all God's people said, amen, amen.